cyber bodyguards for CCP billionaires. Now, see, that's my headline. That's my headline. Now, you will notice there is a story here. Down below here, China's bodyguards struggle to find rich people to protect. There they are. There's the body. Look at that bumming. Look at she is like, listen, look at this. This guy right here, he is not having, not having it. This guy over here, he's like, um, what? Where? Why am I? Did somebody take my shirt? I distinctly remember wearing a shirt. When I walked in, a shirt was a dolphin on it, and it, it was a picture of a dolphin, and it's a dolphin, literally dolphin. Like that's okay. Just slow your roll, son. So these guys are bummed. You can see then there's this this what what is this? Genghis Security Academy? Genghis Security Academy? You can't see that there. That's 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 it. Boom! Scary stuff. Oh, these people, look at this. These guys look ferocious, man. Dude. We'll literally protect you until you're dead. <laughs> I will literally protect you until you're dead! Oh, yeah. Let's see the types. We can see the types here. Human types. Can we identify the human types? This guy over here is like, well, you know, my father did get me this position. You know, I don't care, man. Listen, you know, the laws of law, you know, the boss says you do it this way, you do it this way. Laws of law. You know, you know, it's very, very... You know, you smell like cheese. And now I'm hungry because you smell like cheese. Hmm, hey, dude, you know, this thing over here that you put down here, there's two peas here. There's only one pea at CCP, so you're gonna wanna change that. You know, that's why I'm here. Hey, hey, look, oh, look, 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 they're recording us. Look, mom, hey, mom. Ow, I don't care. I don't care. Just act like you've been here. You know, act like you belong here. Come on. Come on, dude. You're embarrassing me. Dude, totally owning it. Totally. Oh, I'm not owning it, am I? Oh, crap. Don't take the picture yet. Don't use this one. Please don't. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, everybody. All right, everybody. Before you take the picture, everybody. Ah, oh, crap. You took the picture. All right, that's my interpretation. I'm not going to go around to these guys. I think that's enough. I think that's... Uh... Wonderful. This is a great story, though. <laughs> I do love this story. We can we can probably put down this. Uh, we can put you down. At the Genghis Security Academy, which builds itself as China's only dedicated bodyguard school, students learn that the threats to the country's newly rich in this tech age are more likely to emerge from a hacker than a gunman. Especially in China, because this is no guns in China except for government guns but that's not true by the way that's not true that's not true even in China the gangsters still get access to guns Shh. each day students in matching black business suits toil from dawn until midnight at the school in the eastern city of Tianjin where digital defenses are given Equal, oh my gosh, that's unfortunate in this time and age to use the word pegging. Equal billing, equal billing to the traditional close protection skill set of combat, weapons training, and high speed driving. Let's not have our bodyguards be going into pegging right away, okay? Let's just slow your roll there, kids, okay? We want bodyguards, okay? We don't want peggings, okay? Not peggingers. Pangingers are not bodyguards. Objectively, not not probably even uh, cyber. Probably there's some fundamental unguard-like nature about the Peggy E, so to speak. And I, I mean no disrespect to Peggy Bundy, by the way. Around a thousand graduates each year hoping to land jobs as guards to China's burgeoning ranks of rich and famous, positions which can be worth up to $70,000, several times more than an annual, oh, wow, several times more than an annual office wage. Man, I make $70,000 when I sneeze. 
a gazillion times after 300 years of work. But that's beside the point. It's a long sneeze. But the school says it can't meet demand as China's rapid growth mints millionaires. 4.4 million, according to a Credit Suisse 2019 report. More than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. More than in the U.S. You dirty Latin scoundrel saying this is like... You're like trying to throw salt in the wound. You're like, nye, 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 nye. and I'm just kidding. The course fees are up to, I mean, they have 1.3 billion people. The course fees are up to $3,000 a student. And while they had to cancel training between February and June because of the coronavirus, it has not been dampened demand. Only the best make the cuts, says founder Chen Yongquin, insisting his disciplinarian standards are stricter than in the army. I am quick-tempered and very demanding. The army veteran from China's northern inner India, or excuse me, northern inner Mongolia region. Okay, inner Mongolia region. Talk about, okay, that's an occupation army, by the way, if ever there was. So he's an occupation army soldier guy. Just, just putting that in, uh, Putting that out there for all you folks out there that uh, seem to think that uh, China is the way to go. China is the ally that America should align itself with. And, uh, all right. I, I, dis I disavow, by the way. Only by being strict can we cultivate every good sword. If you don't forget it well, it will break itself. So about half of the students are ex-military, Chen says. That's usually how it works when you find want to find people that are willing to crack skulls, even if they're digital ones. They train in rows in a large, shabby sports hall, holding blue plastic guns ahead of them with a steady stare. Now that is uh, right here. I want to take in the beauty of this right here. And I, you know, I just want to, I think that we should do this. There we go. I think that's the name of the band that we're all gonna start. It's called Holding Blue Plastic Guns. And I think that uh, that is the theme of the show. That is the hype, that is the glory. But it's fascinating. They're training now in not only in the fisticuffies, but I don't know if people realize that uh, usually, not always, but I'll just say that the fisticuffication maven and the digital maven are not necessarily contained in the same container. There's some disalignment there, usually. So it could be... Difficult, difficult harmonizing those aspects into one form. But hey, hey, more power to you if you can pull it off. I mean, sucks to be one of the poors that has to deal with one of these billionaire jerks. But uh, hey, ain't no never mind. Other sessions are held in a classroom or a gym where they box in matching red t-shirts. <laughs> where they box in matching red t-shirts. I mean, gosh, dude, I'm just going to say this. Listen, who wrote this article? Oh, this was written Tianjin, China. This is approved. So this is a Ye Quian, and then I'm sure Helen Roxburgh translated it for Agent France Presse. So this is the French uh, organ and the Chinese organ working in harmony to create this state-approved propaganda that makes them look like uh, LARPing winkies. I'm just saying, they look like larp larps The way that's being described not good. Mobile foreign phones are confiscated throughout while meals are taken in silence in a large dining hall presided over by pictures of acclaimed graduates who have protected everyone from China's second richest man, Jack Ma, to visiting presidents. Oh, I read that wrong. Who have protected everyone from China's second richest man, Jack Ma, to visiting French presidents. We have been defining the standard of Chinese bodyguards. Inf instructor Xi Pengfei told API. That's a cool last name, Pengfei. I like that. That kind. That sounds like Pengfei. I don't know if I want to mess with Pengfei. I like the sound. Of, I like the cut of your jib. 
like the cut of your chip. Okay, so this is, don't worry about this difference. But we're going to do a little uh, ping fi. There you go, ping fi. Got any images of a ping ping fi? Ping fi's? I don't know the ping fi from the pings or the fi's from the ping. I, I don't know. I don't see any uh, note, noted ping fi's. But there you go. It's a cool last name. Hey, you people, last name ping fi? Spot on. Good last name. I don't know why it resonates. I like it. I like the sound of it. In one class, students in Paris work through a scenario protecting a client from an intruder. Danger! Shouts GZ. Danger! Ooh, scary. Prompting the guard to quickly throw their boss behind them and pull out a gun in the same move. Those who fail to do it in two seconds are assigned 50 push-ups. The guns at the Tianjin school are fake. China outlaws possession of firearms. For live firearms training, students are taken to Laos in Southeast Asia. Wow, baby. Laos has greater uh, firearms uh, freedoms in the, uh, yeah, yeah. They have, of course, they have to add that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because this this is weird that the, it's like they're, they're it's just so uh, bizarre. Just bizarre for live firearms training. Students are taken to Laos in Southeast Asia. Boy, that raises the cost of producing bodyguards, doesn't it? Tremendously. When you can't just go in your backyard and pop off a few, you got to be like, no, man, we got to fly them 3,000 gazillion miles from here. $3,000, whatever it is, and just whatever. Wiping data, blocking hacks. But in a highly surveilled country with a low rate of street crime, the modern minder, need, minder needs an up-to-date skill set against state monitoring or professional hackers. Chinese bosses don't need you to fight. Chin tells his students of a client base, which includes the country's biggest real estate and tech firms, repelling hacks on mobile phones, network security, spotting eavesdroppers, and wiping data are all required tools in the bodyguard's armory. What would you do if the boss wants to destroy a video file immediately? I'd go... Dude, <laughs> you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> oh, man, I would be fired. I would. I would not make it. I would not make it. I would not make it. I don't think I'd want to delete the file. That would be the the underlying problem. According to Chinese media, he's he's. Oh my gosh, this is his last name. He, hold on. Okay, Chen. Even so, old school threats still exist in China. Earlier this year, billionaire He, his the first name is He. In China, I did not realize that you have a first name of He. That is so beautiful. I love this. He. He, Zhang Jiang, founder of Medea and one of the country's richest men, was kidnapped at his home. According to Chinese media, He's, see, that's what threw me out. That's messed me up. He's son escaped because that could be like, yo, He's son. He's son escaped. Dude, that's rude. Stop that. Rude. Never do that again. Anyway, he's son escaped by jumping into a river and was able to call the police, who said they arrested five suspects. Five suspects at the scene. Dude, they, they, they cracked down hard. Hard and often. Wow. Wow. Student Zhu Pepai, a 33-year-old army veteran from northern Shangxi province, hopes becoming a bodyguard could offset his lack of professional skills or academic qualification. Well, you know, when it come down to it, boss man says, squeeze head and pop, squeeze head and pop, boss man says, boss man says, delete file, delete file, squeeze head, pop, delete file, squeeze head, pop, delete file. That's what you want in life. You want somebody that's by your side. You're like, hey, squeeze head. Boop. And then you say, hey, file delete. They know. You just say, you just say head pop. And then, you, know, you, know, you don't even have to say, you just look at somebody's head and they pop it. It's like, you just look at a file and delete it. That's what you want. That's what you want. But the alumni of the Genghis Academy also provides humdrum services like uh, accompanying children of the rich and famous to school. I don't know that I would necessarily want to entrust my children to the hands of individuals who are paid to try to uh, do things to humans which are less than consensual in nature. But hey, 
I'm not talking about bodyguards in general. I'm talking about bodyguards that work. Well, you know what? Never mind. Stop it. We're all hideous. Everybody's hideous. We're all hideous. But anyway, I wouldn't necessarily trust my, my, my kids with this group of folks. Especially when you're... You know, I'm not really all about that, though, professional stuff. But, you know, if you say, you know, you got a pretty penny there, you polish that pretty penny up, you stick it up my butt, and I go, I go pop some skulls. Skull popping, just pretty that penny up and pop it on up of my, and then we got ourselves a deal. We got ourselves a deal. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, 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 here's something. Uh, another demanded a prospective bodyguard tell him what books he liked to read. He was hired after saying he liked military novels. The best. Wow. Demanded a prospective bodyguard tell him what books he liked to read. He, he was hired after saying he liked military novels. I like military novels. Oh, you like military novels. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever hired someone that, that's ever. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sure I've hired people that have liked military novels. I just... The best can command as much as 500,000 yen a year inside China, but some set their sights on a posting overseas, potentially working with foreign clients. I want to work in the Philippines or Myanmar. Then I can carry a gun. It'll be more challenging. <laughs> and I can earn more. I can carry a gun. Everybody wants to carry a gun. Everyone wants to feel what that's like. Very few people in the world get to feel what that's like. God bless freaking America. We get to walk around and we get to feel what it's like to carry a freaking gun and not have the government try to shoot us for it. It's an exhilarating feeling in and of itself. It means so much philosophically to live in a land that allows its citizens to do such things. It says such things about the benevolence of the very state itself. Uh, but anyway, there you have it. China's rich Sikh bodyguards schooled in digital dark arts. And uh, I, for one, uh, I find this to be an absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. And I love how these folks have uh, been expanding their horizons and uh, working, working the room, working the room. These are happy, fine, fine, fine individuals. And I'm, well... Tell you what, you guys have a great rest of your day, and uh, I mean, if you don't, who else will? <laughs>